and foremost, thanks for coming out on a Saturday uh, to hear about Tezos. That's really cool. I usually take my Saturdays off, but that's okay. Um, so, you know, just a little bit of backstory, just because we are in the Bay Area where, um, where a lot of, I guess, the momentum that, that has culminated in what Tezos looks like today um, started here a few years ago. I remember the first meetup um, for Tezos um, was down in Sunnyvale. There were approximately four attendees, two of which had the last name Brightman. Um, <laughs> so it was a very humbling experience to actually like see much, many more people on a Saturday, no less, um, come out to hear about all the great things that have happened in the ecosystem. Um, so it's been a pretty wild ride. It's only been about three years that we've been kind of focusing on this full time. Um, and as you can imagine, it's, it's rather humbling to go um, back to where we kind of started in Silicon Valley, but also go to places like South Korea, Japan, so on and so forth, and see people with whom, you know, uh, who have the whole vision of Tezos resonate with them. Um, so thank you for all coming out and, uh, and, and participating in the ecosystem. It's very humbling to see like Stephen Andrews, you know, uh, hacking away uh, without a peep in New Zealand and, and to see, <laughs> go to other parts of the world and see equally enthusiastic folks. Um, so today, uh, as some of you guys may know, um, though I, I co-founded Tezos, uh, the intention was always once the ecosystem and, and uh, indeed the network kind of got up and running, um, to work on the application layer in some, some sense. Um, you know, Arthur's still very devoted to working on the core of the protocol, but I've always been much more interested in business applications. And so my new company is called Coase. Um, you know, I, I have my pitch deck here. It's called The Nature of the Firm. It's funny because that's also the name of uh, Ronald Coase's seminal work uh, from 1930. Um, you know, and, and uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I'm up to and the general thesis behind it. Um, you know, I hope, and of course, you can ask questions at the Q&A. Um, so as has been made public before, uh, you know, what we're really focusing on with COS is a digital collectible card game. Uh, so I'll go through that and kind of the market sizing for that. Um, and then, you know, smart contract platforms, why use Tezos in any part of this and to what extent are you actually, you know, do you actually need a blockchain if you do it all? Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about like my thesis and where I'm going moving forward. And as ever, you know, I'd love to hear feedback and, and a little more about that. Um, so geez, I mean, did anyone here play Magic the Gathering when they were a kid? Okay, so, <laughs> not that many, okay. Uh, so Magic the Gathering is kind of like this, this phenomenon of the 90s and indeed 2000s. Um, it was a first collectible card game, so much like all of philosophy is a footnote to Plato, all of collectible card games are a footnote to Magic the Gathering. Um, Magic the Gathering is, you know, a, a CCG where you can basically play with your friends, and you collect cards, and you duel, and you battle. And it sounds quite quaint, but it actually is powered like a rather large multi-billion dollar ecosystem. Um, there's around 20 million Magic players worldwide, um, by some estimates. And you know, as, as is the case with most internet-based things, uh, there's a sort of an analog and a digital version of this. And so the digital versions of this have kind of taken the form of um, uh, games like Magic Online, but also Hearthstone, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, all have apps in different types of styles that are derivative from Magic in, in, indeed. Um, so the top five franchises in, in digital collectible card games have around like 20 million players worldwide, about $1.5 billion in revenue. Um, and it's a pretty compelling, it's a pretty compelling use case if you want something that is fundamentally very economically bankrupt because in the efforts to digitize itself, um, it's completely failed. And so um, there's a pervasive issue in digital collectible card games that they suffer from a lack of marketplaces, and thus um, the cards that people are amassing are rather illiquid. Um, it's not as much fun to play, and in fact, exploration, which made um, Magic so popular in the 1990s, has kind of failed in its digitized versions by um, a lack of marketplaces. Um, smart contract platforms obviously can introduce markets into rather illiquid, uh, illiquid digital goods. And so the idea with COS is to basically introduce these marketplaces um, into a collectible card game format. Um, you know, placing cards in a public network will kind of relinquish the rights of, of publishers to manipulate and indeed, you know, um, facilitate a secondaries market. Um, how does this tie into COS and why did I squat on this name? Uh, well, geez, Ronald Coase is a Nobel laureate. Uh, he's most famous for, you know, his contributions to understanding transaction costs. Um, that being, you know, things like the friction that we observe when we try to exchange goods with others, uh, broadly construed. And so, 
And the theory of the firm, which is Marlokos's most uh, most famous work, uh, he observed that because you know uh, marketplaces have fundamental inefficiencies, it's a lot of the actions that we have are better produced inside of a some sort of corporate structure. Uh, Kevin Verbeck, who recently wrote a book on blockchain technology, observes that this can be interpreted as um, a commentary on the limitations of trust. So, um, you know, when we think about blockchains um, <laughs> through a Kosian lens. Uh, you know, blockchains basically have the potential to lower transaction costs because they um, facilitate the sort of economic transfers that would normally be better uh, inculcated in some sort of firm by basically allowing for a public network to register and validate transactions among potentially distrusting groups. Um, in general, people trust the outcomes of blockchains because they trust the process by which they come to these conclusions because it's all very public and open. And so I've, I've named my company Coast because I hope to introduce these types of inefficiencies into an inefficient marketplace, that being, of course, collectible card games first and foremost because the system is rather broken and um, the, the notions are rather fractured. Um, primarily, you know, my goal um, as, as someone who has a vested interest in the success of the Tezos network um, is to create something that will um, increase demand for Tezos in hopefully an area that's a bit orthogonal to the traditional blockchain structure. I think that um, you know, the cryptocurrency industry, um, though very exciting and interesting, um, fundamentally has an issue with growth if it doesn't um, have more pragmatic applications that use a cryptocurrency more passively in the background. And so we know when you look at the numbers for blockchain usage, they're, they're rather scant. And when you look at most other um, rather centralized models, uh, obviously you see much many more orders of magnitude in usability and uh, and participation. And so if you take just a meager chunk of the magic market <laughs> away by, by introducing a better uh, economically oriented game, um, that's already many more users than um, most cryptocurrencies have today. So kind of the idea here is to sneak cryptocurrencies under the radar and in the back. Um, I was at GDC, this is big gaming conference in San Francisco this week. Um, and uh, I, I'm pleased to report that it was the first conference I'd been to in a long time where I was a complete nobody and no one knew who I was and it was awesome. And uh, so we're focusing on that primarily. And, uh, and so ideally, you know, the, we'll reap the benefits in the Tezos network in the next uh, four to five years as we deploy a game and people play it without knowing that they're using Tezos passively. That's kind of my goal. I go into pitch meetings with VCs and they're like, what do you think about you know, this being a blockchain company? I'm like, oh my goodness, I hope people don't realize that this is the case, right? Um, that will be my marker of success. So that's basically what we're trying to do with Coast, kind of sneak this under the radar and uh, put it in passively in the background. Um, it's a kind of ambitious goal, but uh, it's one that I think will reap the benefits just in terms of the sheer number of folks who are, are gonna get involved. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll probably cover more in the Q&A, but that's just the general overview of what I'm up to now. Um, you'll probably see more from the next few weeks. I publish a bit more about the game itself, but uh, that's, that's what, I, what, what I'm up to and that's where my time is being spent now. So thanks very much and uh, I'm sure Meltem will wake you up now that I put you to sleep. <laughs>